so um, the study I want to show you and the prototype um, was implemented in our own MOOC platform. Um, yeah, we started this 2012 and there we um, offer free courses uh, from our university about digital technologies and computer science topics. Um, so right now, as you might all know, MOOCs are, um, yeah, consist of thousands of learners and usually uh, one, a one size fits all approach uh, is offered to them with a structured course design and the same learning content is provided for all learners, which consists usually of quizzes and videos. And usually the success of a MOOC is uh, measured complete, completion driven uh, by the number of certificates. Um, however, our learners are very diverse. Um, they come with different educational and social backgrounds. Uh, they have different motivations to join a course, either for personal aspects or career advancements. Yeah, so they are typical lifelong learners with different intentions and individual goals. And the focus on completion often does not match the learner's needs. Um, therefore, we implemented learning objectives into our MOOCs as a prototype. Uh, we define objectives um, as a desired learning outcome, which is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Um, these objectives can be created um, by the teaching teams of the MOOCs based on the different learning items of a course. Uh, we focused on course level objectives and um, implemented uh, three types of objectives uh, with a varying degree of engagement and effort required. So the first type is a completion type. So typically uh, these objectives include the certificates of the course. Then uh, we have topic type objectives, uh, which include usually um, a subset of the items of a course. So like a subtopic or like an advanced and, and beginner track of a course. And we have a course exploration um, objective, which is usually used to uh, yeah, enable curious learners um, to take a look into the course and um, yeah, get an idea of the, of the content. Um, so let me show you uh, the implemented prototype. Um, at the beginning of the course, when it starts and the learner first accesses the content, um, a model is displayed with the different objectives, uh, which uh, uh, opens automatically. Um, it can be dismissed and opened again with the, um, with the info box you can see here. Um, this is a model displayed to the learner. So on the very top, um, there's some introductory text uh, about the feature itself, and then the different learning uh, objectives are listed. Um, each learning objective um, provides a short description of the, of the objectives, um, as well as a time effort estimation um, aggregated uh, per, uh, by the learning item types and also the total um, estimated effort for these learning objectives. Uh, if a user selects an objective, um, a short introductory is shown about how the guidance is provided through those objectives. I will show you in a second. Um, the objective can be changed at any time at the progress page of a MOOC. And here you can see how the items that belong to an objective are highlighted in the course. So on the top navigation of a section, all items that belong to uh, objectives are highlighted with these uh, little blue uh, triangles. And the same is done for the um, section navigation on the left hand where you can see the different course weeks. So each course week that includes um, items that belong to an objectives are highlighted as well. Um, this is a, a progress. We um, uh, extended the progress that's also next to the total course progress. The progress of the learning objectives is shown to the user so that the user can monitor yeah, um, its progression through uh, the chosen objective. Um, yeah, so this is based on the preceding study. In the preceding study, we did a UI test for the acceptance of the concept. Um, in this study, between uh, around 49 and 58 percent of the learners selected on objectives. Um, it, the numbers were depending on the presentation alternative, and at the end, um, the model and infobox uh, combined approach that I just showed you was the best suited approach. So we took this for this uh, study. We also conducted a little survey about the usability and usefulness. And in this study, um, around 69% uh, of the learners considered the selection of an objective as useful, and 63% stated that it helped them to achieve their personal goals. So this was done in a preceding study. Um, in this study, we focused on these two research questions. 
uh, how do students with selected learning objectives differ from the total course population and how successfully do students achieve the learning objectives. Um, we investigated two courses. Uh, the first one was a course about human-centered design and the second one was about remote teamwork. Both were uh, running for four weeks. The first one was uh, graded with three exercises and a peer assessment and the second one was graded with a final exam and a team peer assessment. Uh, at the beginning of the quarters, we had uh, 3,000 enrollments, in, uh, over 3,000 enrollments in the first course, and over 2,300 enrollments in the second one. Mm. So as I said, the learning objectives are um, defined by the teaching team. So they decide what they think is useful uh, for, the, for, for the learner and what are um, reasonable, um, reasonable subtopics uh, in, in, in a course, because they are the main experts. Um, in the first course, there was one uh, complete course experience um, objective, which is typically the whole course with a graded um, certificate, which is called Record of Achievement uh, on our platform. Then there were uh, four different topic objectives, which focused on different parts and subtopics of the course. And then there was one uh, inspirational uh, objective where the user just uh, wanted, the user could take this when they wanted to just take a look at the course. Um, the objectives for the remote teamwork course were a bit different and um, here we had three different um, certificate based objectives. Um, the regular one, then one that included active participation, so also forum activity uh, was um, intended by the learner, as well as a real deep dive um, certificate, uh, objective certificate. So all course material, including the participation in the forum, the final exam, and also the team peer assessment. And then there was also this um, inspirational or, or explorative goal for learners who wanted to take a look at the course only. Mm. So for our study, uh, we used the course data after the course had ended and the final results and certificates have been released. We filtered the enrollments um, for users who visited at least one learning item by the middle of the course. We call them shows at middle. Um, and this is a total course population in the scope of this um, work. The course middle is a specific date uh, that marks the latest possible entry date for the course when it is still possible to gain a record of achievement, which is again our graded certificate. Uh, users who never showed up for our course or never had the chance to achieve a graded certificate and join the course later uh, were excluded from the study. Um, as I said, users could choose an objective voluntary. So therefore we couldn't do a controlled experiment. However, it was an authentic and real world learning experience and an observational study. Um, in our study, we compared these two groups. So the uh, users who selected a learning objective and the whole course population, which are the shows at middle. So let's take a look at the results. First, we looked at the social demographic background. Uh, we looked at the age of the different cohorts. Um, there were no uh, practical significant differences. Um, as you can see, their users were on average um, a little bit more than 40 years old. Um, we looked at the gender. Again, no practical significant difference. Roughly one quarter in both populations were female and the rest were male. Um, we looked at the degree in Korea. Again, male findings. Um, more than 8% attended university and the majority of them gained a master degree and around 80% of our learners were professionals, but no real differences between the cohorts. And as a last point for the first research question, we looked at the geographical background. Um, as you can see, uh, most of our users access the platform from Germany. Even if both courses were offered in English, we think this is uh, due to the fact that the platform originates uh, from Germany and is best known there, but also no real difference here. So to answer research question one, we could not identify any practical difference between students with selected learning objectives and the total course population regarding the age, gender, degree, career status, or geographical location. Mm. Yeah, let's investigate the second research questions. Uh, question. Um, here in this table, you can see the objective selection rates. As you can see, they are very different in both courses. In, one, in the first one, it was around 28%, and in the second, 60%. 3%, we think this is caused by the fact that the objectives were defined individually for each course by different teaching teams. So they differ in complexity and the, also the way they are formulated. Um, 
In the preceding study, we had uh, a selection rates of uh, 49 and 58 uh, percent. On all we think, this is still a notable portion of learners who select the learning objective, and the general acceptance of this feature is quite good. Mm. Let's take a look at the achievement of these objectives in both courses. So as you can see here, uh, the most selected objectives in both courses were the ones uh, with, a, with an included record of achievements, so a graded certificate, but also the other um, objective types had a notable amount of users who selected it. Uh, we are quite happy with the achievement rates, for example, 28% for the record of achievement objective in the first course and so on. Um, yeah, I mean, you all know the um, um, completion rates and moves, so we are quite happy with the numbers here. We also looked if uh, students exceeded um, their objectives and maybe increased the motivation over the runtime of a course. We did that by defining a criterion uh, that needed to be achieved to count as an exceeded objective. For example, if a topic objective uh, was chosen by a user, we said, okay, if a a certificate was achieved. Additionally, we say this was an exceeded um, objective. And also here we have um, some users who achieved that or who exceeded that. And so also quite interesting numbers. Only two objectives weren't chosen by many um, uh, users in the first course, the so deep dive testing and the material collector one. We don't know uh, why this wasn't chosen. Probably the teaching team had a different intention here than the learners, um, but yeah, we don't know the reason uh, just by looking at the quantitative numbers. Um, yeah, so um, the issue here was since this was a completely new approach uh, of, of course completion um, and also a completion of subparts of the courses, we couldn't really compare the numbers to anything else um, except for um, the, the students who selected um, an objective that included uh, uh, graded certificate, the record of achievement, which is abbre abbreviated RA here. And we compared these uh, with a, um, with a uh, certification rate of the total course population. So um, we see here an increased certification rate in both courses. And we are quite happy with these numbers and consider them as practically significant. So in the first course, we had a um, certification rate of the total course population of almost 16%. And when we look at the um, relative numbers of the uh, certification rate of the, of the students who selected uh, this objective, we have around 28%. In the second course, it's 19% and versus 39%. Um, so this is uh, quite an improvement. However, uh, these relative numbers are based on different total quantities and therefore do not reflect an absolute increase in numbers of gained certificates but we think this objective achievement-based method is more reasonable for calculating completion rates and moves than the traditional approach. So to answer the second research question, uh, about one-fifth to half of the learners achieve their learning objectives and a notable amount of them even exceed them. Uh, the comparison of the certification rates of the total course population with the users who selected an objective showed a practical significant improvement in our, in our view. So that's it. Here are the results summarized again and the answers of the research question. And yeah, that's it. Thank you, Tobias, for this presentation. Uh, it looks like having, having clear objectives is a, is a good idea. Um, and uh, we have a few questions in the, in the chat, a few comments. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to Here's one um, from Peter. The idea of personalized objective is really nice, but uh, learning objectives for your courses looked too similar, especially for the second one. Maybe this cause is caused by no, is the cause of no finding no difference. Uh, yeah, the second course, um, there were three uh, learning objectives that included um, the, the graded certificate. That's true. Um, as I said, they were defined by the teaching team and the teaching team in this course thought it's, um, it's reasonable in a remote, in a course about remote teamwork to have a, a differentiation between the intention of to just get, gain the knowledge and get a certificate and also 
um, actively participate. So this was the decision of the teaching team. But I agree that in these courses, uh, the learning objectives were uh, more close to each other and also, yeah. yeah. Thank you and feel free to uh, answer some of the other questions that are in sure. the chat. So, thank you, Tobias.